I'm in the kitchens here with Pia from Just a Splash, and we are going to create a beautiful lamb dish using this perfect little pouch of pork, just enough to cook um, for four people. Uh, we're going to cook a rump of lamb today um, with some of this lovely pork, and it's kind of it's got fennel and shallots and prunes and uh, and cranberries, so it's kind of Very fruity, minty. yeah. Kind of, it is cold at the moment and wintry, so I wanted to create something that would just kind of bring this lovely local lamb together, but, and, and port and lamb work beautifully together. Um, and I think to have a little pouch like this, just the right amount that you need is perfect, because I don't know about you, but I always do end up with half a bottle of this, quarter of a bottle of that, or end up buying miniatures. And these are a great invention, which you'll have to tell me a bit more about, but let's, Let's get cooking first and get everything kind of started off. So, I've got some shallots here, and then I've also got some fennel, which not many people would normally eat, cook yeah. with lamb. But I think it works really well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop this up. Now I'm gonna kind of edit this at the same time while we're chatting. I'm a bloke that can multitask. There aren't yeah. many of us. Very impressive. I know, I don't do much of it at home, but. <laughs> cook and you uh... Yeah, yeah, well. So we're going to shred up the fennel, and this is going to give us a, just a really nice sort of delicate aniseed flavour, but not full on. Okay. I actually prefer it to onions a lot, a lot of the time. So that's kind of just enough there. I don't need it too much. So just enough to go with just a do splash. You just need it in place of onions. Yeah, okay. I do. If I want that kind of lighter flavour, but I'm also going to use some shallots as well. And all we're going to do is just slice those up. I'm not going to chop them, but I'm going to slice them the same thickness as the fennel so they all cook at the same time. Okay. Which is really important when you're kind of doing one pot dishes. You want everything to cook at the same time. So do you cook much? Um, yeah, I try to. Um, but I'm like, I guess a lot of people where I, I just, A, don't like the mess, I don't like the time. Yeah. So doing something in one pot. So one pot is, dish is good, yeah? Is good. Yeah, yeah? Good, 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 good. Uh, and... In terms of, of just a splash, and you've created these lovely pouches, I'm just going to drop a little bit of oil into my pan. I'm using some rapeseed oil, so it's got a kind of natural buttery flavour rather than olive oil. Okay. And it's got a slightly higher um, cooking temperature with, with, um, with rapeseed oil than olive oil as well. And I think olive oil is lovely, but I do like to use rapeseed oil in cooking and things like that a lot. Okay, so you mostly just use rapeseed oil? I use rapeseed oil in my cooking, unless I'm cooking real Italian food sort of thing. Okay. Um, but I do, I do love olive oil as well. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. Now what happens is when you add salt to a pan, it draws the moisture out, yeah. which allows the cooking process to happen. Because obviously with something like shallot, some fennel, there's lots of water in there. You need to get it out before it then starts to caramelise, okay? I'm like a lot of people, we just will cook, but like not actually think about why we're doing certain things yeah. and what is actually into the food. I, I always think the thing with cooking is it's about building layers upon layers of flavour. Yeah. So this is our first layer. So we've got shallots and fennel. Now our next layer is going to be some lovely rosemary, okay. which works beautifully with lamb, we know that. And then also some thyme, okay? So thyme and rosemary will, will be the herbs that sit in the garden all year long. Right and they're robust and they last. So they're really good to have in the garden or in pots in the kitchen winter. Or in Simon and Garfunkel songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we'll just chop up this rosemary. There we go, and we're gonna get that in, okay? So we're just starting to get some color, because that's salt has now started to draw out the moisture and we're starting to get a caramelisation, okay? So again, what we're going to do, because this is all about one pot dishes, okay, with your sauce, right. sorry, with your, with your uh, alcohols, which is, you know, a really interesting approach to cook with, because actually as chefs, we bung these things in all the time yeah. and I never thought, why would I not have a bottle? Okay. At, at work, obviously, um, but, you know, at home, I kind of like the idea of it because it's about giving people reasons to cook these dishes, not to not cook them. Because obviously people are going, oh, well, I don't really want to buy that whole bottle. Exactly. And I, get and that. I only use it for one, yeah. one dish. And also you want to see it like, you know, you buy your herbs, you buy yeah. your spices, and then you buy your pouch, and it's, it's sort of a, a, just another ingredient. 
That's, yeah. Uh, and what, what the alcohol does as well is it marries all the flavours together. Yeah. So, I've got a little bit of grapeseed oil there onto the lamb, okay? And we're just going to coat that skin, okay? And get the oil on there. So we've got a little rump of lamb, so it's the top of the leg. Okay. It's a nice steak. Um, it's a good one for cooking. You can cook it pink if you rest it, and it's lovely. Really, really good. So we're going to season up the lamb. So a little bit of black pepper, and then some salt. I always like to use things like Malden sea salt for this kind of cooking. Okay. okay, rather than just table salt, but table salt will still do the same. And then skin side down, and then we're just going to pop it into the centre of the pan. And I've pushed all the fennel and all the shallots to the edge. Okay, so I've got direct contact. Yeah, if so yeah, I, I do that, that with, one, with one pan, you don't think that you yeah. actually be you just throw it in. And well, if you just chuck it in, you're not going to get direct contact, so it's not going to fry, it's not going to sear, it's not going to caramelise. Right. Whereas I've made a space around the edges, I've pushed all the fennel, all the shallots, all the herbs to one side, and then we're going to get colour on there first, before we add your port. Okay. Okay? So, let's go back to... So, how long has the business been running for? Uh, well, we started it about, I guess, a year and a half to two years ago. Right. Um, and obviously, we've been in development since then, but yeah. we're about to launch the retail, so it will and be available at uh, some, you know, uh, for purchase across the country soon. So you, you've got national listings coming, yes, which is fantastic, yes. which is why we're here. Exactly. We're cooking with the products, we're creating recipes ready for as soon as it's on the shelf. Yeah. So, lamb is just sat, I've not touched it, it's just cooked, direct contact. But you see there, you don't get the caramelisation if you start moving it about, okay? Yeah, okay, so you just need it to sit there. Exactly, for... yeah. You've got to let it caramelise and not fiddle and mess about and touch it. And, and you can see some of the shallots and the fennel has just started to really caramelise. That's okay, because we're about to hydrate it now with your port. Okay. Okay, so we'll just zoom out. So now we take the port. How much is in the pouch? Is it 100 mils? So it's 100 mils. Yeah. So it is a perfect amount. Perfect amount. And this is 45 wine port. So it's it, it's it, you don't need as much as you would do if you're cooking with wine. So and it's going to give a real deep flavour, which is great. So you're using the whole thing. I am absolutely go big or go home. That's okay. what I think <laughs> for this one. Yeah, I mean I'm making enough sauce. As if there were four portions in there. Right. Um, no but obviously you can assume one. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So, in with our prunes. And what these California prunes are going to do, so they're from over. Have you tried these? I Have yeah. a taste. They are delicious. Them, so. And all we're going to do is pop them into the port. And what they're going to do is they're just going to go... Good. And they're just going to drink the port and soak up. And so you're going to get these prunes that are just soaked in port. Yeah. And we're also going to add some cranberries for that little sort of sharpness as well. So we're getting that sweetness, port, uh, lamb, port and fruit all work beautifully together. That's so that's why I've kind of done that. And because we've now caramelised the lamb and got a lovely colour on the skin side, we can now add some liquids and poach the rest of the lamb. So we've got some beef stock here. I tend to use beef because Lamb stock is quite strong and very lamby in flavour, whereas beef stock's just got that sort of savouriness. Um, it doesn't and, clash at all. No, and, and all it does is it, the port on its own, once we've boiled out the alcohol, becomes very intense. So you need a little bit of stock just to kind of bring it together and make the sauce, okay? And this will then like, cook all the inside. Absolutely. And it means that the lamb will just poach in lovely port and the beef stock and all the flavours from the pan have all come off the pan so as you add your just a splash port all the caramelised flavours lift off the pan right. okay and that's called deglazing so if i just you can now see that everything is now reducing and boiling away and we're going to add some butter to thicken the sauce and bring it all together i was thinking in the winter you can get away with that nice little bit of butter mm -hmm. in the summer when you're trying to wear your swimming costume yeah, maybe, maybe not <laughs> A little bit of butter is not a bad thing, is it? Absolutely. And it's so simple to, um, you know, to, to do a reduction sauce like this. Mm. I, I think, you know... Well, you've got it alcohol yeah, naturally. It. Yeah, al alcohol naturally has got a slight bitterness to it when you just taste it, you see. And, and you need to boil it away to just 
to, to leave the original fruit that made that wine or, or the fortified wine. And, and our job as chefs is to kind of boil it out yeah. and just and then balance it with stocks to make a beautiful sauce. Um, and one pot cooking is absolutely the way forward to get maximum flavour out of anything. you've got everything working for you right now. The yeah, meat, the nothing. I mean, you look at that lamb. It's got that sort of red oh, tinge yeah, to it absolutely. because of your port has just sort of gone so straight into everything. the lamb, which is beautiful. Uh, and obviously, you could do this exact same dish in a slow cooker. You just change the kind of meat that you would use. So you would use a shoulder of lamb okay. and you put it in the slow cooker and you put everything in. Right. Turn it on and go to work for the day. Yeah. Come home, oh my God, your house will smell amazing. Yeah, um, and you just cook it all day long. Yeah, and you just have a super rich um, dish and it will just fall off the bone. Right. Or you could use lamb shanks as well, which is really popular. Um, but to do a quick one pot dish in sort of 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. You need something like a rump of lamb or neck or uh, loin. So that would work really, really well. And everything is just now coming together. And I'm just moving the lamb around just to kind of soak up as much of that lovely port as I can. I love the taste of port as well. Yeah, really, really good. And that lamb will just be nice and picky. You could also do this with venison as well. I don't really have venison much. Mm -hmm. But it is delicious. We get a lot of venison around here. Dude. Yeah, and particularly this time of year, there's lots of venison to be had, um, and it's delicious. And, and a bit of fruit in us works. Venison. Yeah, I mean it depends on what cut you use with venison. Um, there's very little fat on venison, so you have to be careful you don't overcook it. Okay. So I'm going to lift the lamb out now, and I'm just going to let it rest on there. Okay, it's important to let it rest while we adjust the seasoning and have a taste. It's your favourite time, this tasting. I know. Can you just nip up, grab two teaspoons from that table over there? Okay. We'll have a little taste and then we can make a decision on where we want it to be. I've got one here. Got yeah. So we'll have a little taste. Oh, that's going to be nice and black. So it's got a sweetness and a savouriness. Yeah. That's going to work. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more stock just to allow it to loosen out a little bit. But for me, that's it. Yeah? And you could serve this just up with some lovely vegetables on the side. You know, you could roast loads of carrots and parsnips and sweet potatoes and just serve that up. It would be really nice with this. And that just would roast away in the oven while you do this. So there's kind of lots of things you can do. So, can you pass me that plate there? And I will serve this up. So meanwhile, lamb is resting. So what you've got to think about when you're cooking meats is the minute you put it in a hot pan, it tightens mm -hmm. and it contracts. So once it's cooked to the point you want it, and that'll be pink, it's important to then take it out for it to just kind of relax and all the fibres just to retract and then it becomes much more succulent and juicy and delicious and tender, which is kind of what you want. How long do you uh, let it rest? For? Well, some people say as long as it cooks, you leave it to rest. I'm not so sure. I think it needs, you know, that piece of meat, two or three minutes, just resting time and you will enjoy it far more. It's like when you get out of the sauna and you just need to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah, yeah you need that kind of... Again. Yeah, so just lift up plenty of those prunes, there's cranberries, and then some of the sauce. So, you know, if you're making this for three or four people, you could just divide all this up, get this all ready, and then it's ready to go. So it's we'll, so easy to impress your guests with. Yeah, I think you've kind of gone to town when you really haven't. Okay, so we're just gonna carve this up. Yeah, once it's rested, that's what makes it nice and easy, okay? Just pop that, just sit it on top, okay? And then we'll take some more of the sauce, because we've made this beautiful sauce, and it will just... There we go, and I think just that little bit of fresh on the top, just some little pieces, really. Because I'm not a big fan of just putting a sprig on for the sake of it. I think, you know, because everyone just goes, takes it off. <laughs> so I'm just putting some little pieces on really. Could you use the same sauce with like duck or goose? Or duck would work really well. Goose, 
You have to be careful with goose because it's super rich and you almost need that, you need it to be a little sharper. Oh. So maybe more cranberries, a little bit more, maybe a, um, a touch of red wine vinegar might just help it so a little bit more acidic. Bit of, yeah. yeah, but the duck it would work perfectly because duck and sweetness work well. Yeah. You could do this with chicken thighs if you wanted it to be a bit cheaper, stuff like that. But there you go, that is how to cook a rump of lamb with uh, just a splash of port, California prunes and cranberries. And then we've got shallots and fennel in there. So. Have a little take. Do you want a... Here you go. There is a knife and a fork. Have a little taste and see what you think. It's a velvet in the sauce. Well, that's that little bit of butter has just kind of brought it together and kind of almost becomes like an emulsion rather than just a, a sauce. Yeah. That's why you don't want to boil it down. You just add the butter in at the end and it just becomes a bit silkier. Nice. The meat is just so soft. So that's a rump of lamb, that really easy to get hold of. You can get those super easy. But if you want the recipe for this, go to which website? Justasplash.co.uk. Justasplash.co.uk. You can get the recipe and you can order all this stuff online now. Okay.